Good evening, everyone. Before we dive into the exciting topic of today, I have something to confess. I used to think quantum was just a cool word for extra large. Like I used to go to a coffee shop and order one quantum Americano. And the barista used to get it. He used to bring me one extra large Americano, the largest size that they have. It's like we shared this common understanding of quantum. But that was before I began my work in the field. In today's session, we're going to demystify that a little. So who knows, maybe at the end, you'll be ordering your coffee with a quantum confidence. In 15 minutes today, we're going on a journey through the landscape of AI from its humble beginnings to its quantum powered future. A world where computing takes on a completely new dimension. So hopefully at the end, you'll get a glimpse of the amazing possibilities that lie ahead of us with quantum powered artificial intelligence. So let's start this journey and travel back in time till 1956 at the historic Dartmouth conference where the AI seed was planted. A dream was born, a dream to create machines with minds of their own. It was a bold dream. And since then, AI embarked on a journey evolving by every passing decade. So if you look at 1960s and 70s, AI pioneers like John McCarthy and Marvin Minsky, they have laid down the foundation of AI, focusing on problem-solving systems and rule-based systems. And then in 1980s and 90s, AI faced some challenges, but the research persisted and the dream persisted, focusing on neural networks and machine learning. Fast forward to the late 20th century, where we started seeing AI replicating human behavior. It was no longer theoretical, it was becoming practical and impacting industries. And today, our 21st century, it marks the meteoric rise of AI. Breakthroughs in machine learning, specifically deep learning, revolutionized the field. Neural networks inspired by our amazing brains, it has created a completely new dimension of AI. We started seeing machines understanding speech, images, and text like never before. And at the midst of this lightning innovation, generative AI emerged as a superstar. We are all using it these days, right? Chat GPT and GPT models. Today with generative AI, machines are co-creating with humans. They are helping us draft content, create articles, artworks, music, applications, almost everything. So all of this has unfolded on classical computing over around 70 years. Imagine the capabilities that lie ahead of us with quantum powered computing. So if you think of classical computing like a race car, think of quantum computing like a spacecraft. It doesn't just drive along the track, it has quick access to shortcuts, it can explore multiple routes at the same time, it just defies the traditional capabilities of a race car. This is quantum computing. And to explain this further in a small animation, imagine yourself in a city walking down the street with people going around their daily lives. In this city, there are AI powered superheroes. Think of them as digital champions who are tasked in solving complicated problems like helping you find the quickest route to work. Now these superheroes, they operate in a world known as classical computing, where computers process information using bits. Think of them as tiny switches that can be either off, zero, or on, one. It's like our AI heroes are navigating the city with two options, either they go left or right. But here's where the problem gets interesting or the story gets interesting. Classical computing, while powerful, it has its limitations. It's like our AI heroes are trying to tackle monumental problems, complicated problems with only two options, either going left or right. While this might work for some scenarios, imagine our heroes are in a city where the streets form complicated web. It's like a vast maze. 
These streets, they represent the challenges our AI heroes face on daily basis. And as they dive deeper into their mission, they experience a phenomena called exponential growth. The more complicated the maze becomes, the more computational power it requires, and classical computing, while powerful, it struggles to keep up. It just cannot handle this complexity. Just when our AI heroes are at the brink of their exhaustion, a new hero enters the scene, quantum computing. Quantum computing is not bound by the limitations of classical computing, and instead of bits, it uses quantum bits or qubits. These qubits are characterized by two main superpowers. The first one is superposition. A qubit in a quantum world can exist in multiple states at the same time. It doesn't be zero or one, it's zero and one at the same time. This feature gives quantum computing the ability to explore multiple solutions to the problem, multiple combinations to the problem. How powerful this can be. And if you go back to the example we're trying to solve, finding the quickest route to work, it's like our AI heroes can be in multiple places at the same time. They can explore multiple routes simultaneously. As if I have 100 superheroes, each exploring 100 different routes at the same time. How speedy our problem solving becomes. If we go to the second superpower, it's called entanglement. Entanglement, it's a special connection between qubits. When qubits are entangled, they communicate with each other no matter how far apart they are. If we go back to the problem again, it's like our superheroes that are able to share the updates with each other in real time, even if they are on opposite sides of the city. So if, if we bring these two powers together, the power of superposition and entanglement, it means that our heroes are not able only to solve so, or to have multiple solutions to complicated problems, but also to share with each other the updates and strategies in real time. This is how powerful quantum computing is. And quantum computing today is not going to replace classical computing. It's going to complement it. It's going to solve for the problems that are currently beyond the capabilities of classical computing. Problems like helping us find the one best option out of multiple millions of options, the one best solution, the one best combination, these kind of problems where quantum computing is promising to help. And there are many of those out there across different industries. If we look for in healthcare, for example, where scientists, they spend today years of development time trying to find the adequate drug to a disease. This process requires simulating the molecular behavior of multiple molecules in order to identify the best potential candidates. Now, simulating molecular behavior is the intensively computationally powerful process. It requires huge computational power and years of development time and effort. Imagine this takes a leap into a quantum world where quantum computing can simulate the molecular behavior of billions of molecules immediately and identify us the one best molecule that fits our success criteria. How amazing that is. It's not only gonna, re gonna save us time from years into months and weeks, it's gonna save us cost of that development effort. And very importantly as well, it's going to increase our chances in discovering novel treatments, treatments to diseases today that we do not have access to because we are not able to explore all potential options of the right drug to that disease. So new treatments that will help us cure for cancer, for example, which is the world leading cause of death we being able to come up with personalized cancer treatments for cancer patients or autoimmune diseases. And here I can understand the impact of autoimmune disease coming from a personal experience with cutaneous psoriasis, which is a skin condition that's characterized by red spots on the skin across the elbows, knees, and some parts of the body, as you can see. So 
Scientists until today, they are not able to identify the one cause of autoimmune diseases. And accordingly, they are not able to come up with one treatment to cure this disease. There are multiple treatments out there. Good luck finding the one that best works with your body. So imagine this takes a leap into a quantum world where scientists today are able to, uh, to understand and study the underlying molecular behavior of autoimmune disease and accordingly come up with a treatment strategy. So the promise of quantum computing today is not only a technological advancement. It's a sign of hope for each and every one of us today going through a health challenge. It's a sign of hope to save their lives and hopefully the lives of, of the next generation. So this is in healthcare, but quantum computing has lots of promises across many other industries like supply chain. Supply chain organizations, they play a vital role in our lives. They are the ones behind the availability of the products that we use on a daily basis, like groceries, our clothes, our electronic devices, cars, almost everything. And at the core of their operation, they rely on optimization models. Models like a route optimization or uh, demand forecasting or resource allocation, product design, product scheduling, these kind of optimization models. In order for them to streamline their operations, increase their efficiency, reduce their cost, and eventually make us happier customers. Now, the challenge is these models in the, in the classical world, they rely on algorithms that struggle with the enormous number of variables that's incorporated in the model. So say, for example, you want to build a model to help a route optimization model to help you find the fastest route to a delivery truck. Now, in order to build this model, you need to incorporate multiple variables like traffic condition, weather condition, the size of the vehicle, the type of the vehicle, the fuel cost, the driving skills of the driver, the location of the customer, and the list can go on and on. So the more variables that you incorporate into the model, the more accurate it will become because it will be more accurately reflecting real world conditions and constraints. But at the same time, the more complicated it becomes. So imagine this takes a leap into a quantum world where quantum computing today with this ability to handle combinatorial problems efficiently, it's able to help us achieve more than 60 times faster results than classical computing. So the model that takes you four months, you'll be able to achieve results in two days. In addition to more than 50% increase in efficiency and accuracy. So that's the supply chain. And there is a whole list of use cases where quantum computing is promising to help across climate change, across energy production, clinical trials, R&D, cryptography, security, all of this. So ladies and gentlemen, as we wrap up this journey into the quantum world, I promise you today ordering your coffee will never be the same again. So gone are the days where you go to a coffee shop and order one quantum Americano. No. From now on, you confidently go to a coffee shop, you get on the bar, and you order one extra large Americano, but with a sprinkle of entangled espresso particles. Because it's not about the size, right? It's about the adventure that you take with every sip. Thank you so much for being a great audience. And as we say in the quantum world, may your day be in the superposition of joy. Thank you.